We as Americans have all seen the power of the U.S. Supreme Court and uh, the influence it has over the country. The court's docket this term was filled with several potentially historic and landmark decisions covering issues ranging from abortion, COVID vaccination requirements to the Second Amendment. Well, today, the impact of the court was once again in focus as news broke that Associate Justice Stephen Breyer may retire. Here with this breaking news from Washington is Harris Alec. Harris reports for The Washington Times. Harris, welcome back to the program. Always a pleasure to be on. Thank you so much for having me here, Tony. So have these reports been verified yet? They have uh, not 100% been verified, but the White House has essentially told uh, numerous sources and uh, numerous reporters that uh, Associate Justice Breyer, who is 83 years old, will be leaving the bench. Uh, he was actually planning on announcing his retirement, but word leaked. And uh, I think there's a little bit of a cleanup right now they're trying to do to figure out whether or not uh, how long the announcement's going to be. Obviously, a Supreme Court op opening is such a lucrative uh, position that there are many people who are already jockeying for it, but it's also a lucrative appointment for a president. Right now, there's a six to three conservative majority on that court, while Justice Breyer's departure will not necessarily change that direction in one way or another. If President Biden is to appoint someone who is, say, in their 40s, that person could be on the court for the next 30 or 40 years and potentially could be a uh, bulk work for the court's progressive, uh, more liberal uh, a, uh, the the wing of the court that has a tendency to uh, view the Constitution as a living document and tends to interpret it in many, many ways. And as you yourself said, the court has become increasingly more important in our daily lives. It's focused on our um, on issues such as COVID, on issues such as the Second Amendment, on issues such as abortion. And both Democrats and Republicans are increasingly gearing up for what is likely to be a contentious nomination, although one that I think both Republicans admit that there's not necessarily as much uh, uh, ability to obstruct, given that the Senate remains in Democratic control for right now. So, Harris, this really is not a big surprise because the left has been really hounding Breyer to retire to lay out the scenario that you just described, that they would have a younger liberal on the bench because there's fear, given especially the, the uh, track record of this administration, that the Democrats may not have the White House in four years, and that could set up yet another conservative appointment or constitutionalist onto the highest court. Absolutely, Tony. Well, there's actually a very, very good chance that the uh, Democrats won't have uh, the Senate as of next January. So I think there's been an increasingly uh, big push to uh, have uh, Justice Breyer retire so they can appoint someone who is significantly younger. Uh, we've seen numerous dark money progressive groups attempt to target him and push him into retiring. We've seen op-ed pages on both the left and the right been filled with arguments for why he should retire. And I think today, you know, his decision to do so just signals more to the fact that Democrats are facing a very, very difficult political environment. And uh, I think had President Donald Trump won, Breyer wouldn't have necessarily resigned uh, or opted to retire. But I think he's looking now at potentially a Republican administration coming into in 2024, at the very least 2028. He's looking at a Republican Senate, which could be in power for significantly longer. And I think he's realizing this is the best time to go. Uh, we'll see who President Biden ends up appointing. He's already promised to nominate a African-American woman. Uh, the the jockeying has already started. As I said, Stacey Abrams' sister, who's a uh, judge in uh, Georgia, is, uh, from what I'm told, uh, looking to potentially move up. But we'll see what ends up happening. There's also some talk that President Biden might choose to uh, tap Vice President Kamala Harris for the position, although that seems to face significantly long odds, given the fact that Democrats will lose control of the Senate. And then you, know, you would also have to figure out a way to uh, uh, get the confirmation for a uh, vice presidential uh, appointment through with, without a sitting vice president. So it's more likely going to be a, uh, a justice with significant amount of uh, experience. We'll obviously have to see as uh, we'll obviously just have to see just how long the process takes and we'll have to see exactly who the nominees are. And uh, Republicans, as I said, are facing strong headwinds in opposing this, but it really depends on how controversial or radical the nominee ends up being. Well, that's a given. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty far to the to the left. Final question for you, Harris. How soon do you expect the confirmation hearings for the nominee to begin after he or she is revealed? Uh, so we're probably looking at a uh, mid-February to early March timeline for reveal. And uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee has said that they are going to move expeditiously. So we could have a nominee in place as, as early as uh, 
may. It just really kind of depends on how controversial the nominee does end up being, and it depends on uh, how much uh, time Senate Democrats want to spend on this. Time is, is kind of both a boon and a deficit for them right now, because if the nominee that President Biden does pick ends up being controversial enough to not be able to go on the support of moderate Democrats, they've still got six to eight months to pick someone else. Um, however, there's also big agenda items they're looking to push. Uh, there's a budget bill coming up in February 18th that they have to pass to keep the government afloat. Uh, there's mm. uh, potentially talk of re, uh, about attempting to repass portions of President Biden's Build Back Better Act. So this nomination, I think, is going to be something they're going to try to dispense with as quickly as they can and move on to regular business because the clock is ticking after the November elections right. and heading into January. There's very likely going to be a Republican Senate. And at that point in time, uh, President Biden's going to have to be dealing with uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, potentially. Yeah. Harris, Alec, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for the latest uh, on uh, this unfolding news.